I'm Brad Hafford, archaeologist at the University of Pennsylvania, and I've just returned from a field season in southern Iraq at the ancient city of Ur. My team was quite international, not only involving Iraqis and Americans, but also Germans and French. The season was short, but we learned a great deal and we're still processing the data. Historians and archaeologists often study the elite, the movers and shakers, but everyday people are the real keys to history. We've already been digging common houses inside the city, but one of our primary goals this season was to see how people outside the city lived. Were they unable to afford the protection of the city wall? Would their houses and artifacts be different? Even excavating a hundred years ago, Leonard Woolley knew there were many houses beyond the walls, but he felt they were too badly eroded to be informative. His contour map shows several small mounds stretching mainly east and northeast of the city, and we began work on the closest of these. It sits directly across what is likely an ancient waterway, a wide canal from the Euphrates River that has long since dried up. The river is now more than 10 kilometers away, and no branch flows it over today. The digital elevation model shows the height of the low mound is around 3 meters above the surrounding plain, while the main mound reaches more than 12 meters. Mounds like this develop from successive occupation by ancient inhabitants, so there have been occupation here, just not as intensely as on the main city mound. In 2019, Jörg Fassbender from Ludwig Maximilian University in Munich ran a short magnetometry survey over part of this low mound, and Emily Hammer from the University of Pennsylvania did some preliminary survey. In 2021, archaeologist and tech specialist Paul Zimmerman took high-resolution drone photos of the surface. All of this work helped to guide our selection of two trenches in the 2022 season. I asked the graduate student supervisor of the trench number six, Marco Wolf, to explain his excavation unit on this low east mound to our epigrapher, Dominique Charpin. I filmed that tour, and so now we'll hear from him. So we are at the East Mount. Um, we started here because we wanted to check how the people outside of the city wall live compared to the ones inside the city wall. Um, so we checked with the magnetometry that was done in 2019 of possible structures that could be housed and one of the areas was here in square six where when we started we could already see some mud bricks that could be alignments of walls. So we followed those to check if those are walls and following that search for more walls. The most noticeable thing on the low mound are curious U-shaped earthworks. These are modern, not showing in Corona satellite or U2 images from the late 1950s and early 1960s. They were made either in the Iran-Iraq War or the first Gulf War in the 80s or the 90s, and they were emplacements for anti-aircraft guns or tanks. I had long been concerned that these might have disturbed the ancient materials too much to make excavation worthwhile. But walking survey and drone photos showed me that there were ancient brick alignments still here that would tell us a lot. Drone photos showed light-colored linear alignments that were sometimes 25 meters long, and they looked very much like buildings. Magnetometry survey to detect minor differences in magnetics and thereby show denser materials like baked brick, did not show these light alignments, but did confirm smaller alignments of what were almost certainly ancient buildings beneath the surface. At first we had a, this very crumbly material surfacing, like these here that are on very loose soil, and we were at first very confused because we did not really know uh, are those cassites? Um, can it be maybe even younger than that? Is it first millennium? And just one layer of bricks uh, deeper, we found those very solid walls that are also of different uh, shaped bricks. We have the very typical old Babylonian ones with rectangular shape, but we also got stuff that looks um, Ur free and Akkadian with. 36 to 36 centimeters um, square so ones. Uh, uh, they used everything they could get. Um, we continued to search for the walls, and um, very soon we found here 
the remains of a mud brick wall of probably a um, new Babylonian uh, period, which was cut into the house. And we checked there on wall B that part of the bricks of wall B run below this wall. And we could also see the, the ditch, the foundation ditch that was made to cut this wall into the um, probably a second millennium house. Um, cutting those two, those three walls off of this wall, which will probably be the outer wall of the house. Square six with Marco as supervisor is near the western edge of the low mound, primarily covering what appeared in magnetometry to be well-preserved courtyard house. The fact that it existed was pretty clear, but we didn't know the date of the building or how well it really was preserved. We needed to excavate to find out and to obtain data for our question about the status of people outside the city. We continued to search for more rooms, more walls, and very soon we had here, Locus 5, our biggest intact um, unit of the house. Which is rather large. Uh... Yeah, it's roughly four and a half by five meters. Mm -hmm. So at first we were like, ah, oh, this could be the yard area. But um, judging from when you look there, where our workmen are right now in Locus 2, our very first room we found, um, if you extend the room to the outer wall, you also have four and a half by four and a half meters. So from there, um, we can just go inside here of Locus 5 to see some, get a bit of layout. Yes, for our first thought, it may be the yard, it can be, we're not sure, since. And if you you're on the floor level now? No, no, no not yet. Uh, and we're still in debris level. We can still mm -hmm. see um, brick surfacing from below yeah, as a pottery that is going deeper. So we now are probably on one of the very first debris levels because here lots of uh, mud wash and plaster short, um, surfaces. So we now um, got through all the top debris that kind of collapsed into this through the millennia. And this is probably the very first debris level right above the floor, I believe so. Um, we will probably not get down to the floor in this season, since we still have some time to, uh, some time to go and I don't, do not want to just cut down to get there and don't know how deep it goes. We always hope to find well-preserved floors in a building with items left behind in place to help us understand how the room was used. Most floors were simply packed mud, but some were paved with bricks. In the Locus 5 of this building, and Locus is just a space, sometimes the equivalent of a room, we did reach part of a paved floor, but we hit it near the end of our season and only uncovered part of it. We did find a fragment of an old Babylonian tablet on that floor, however. Uh, interestingly, we found two doorways that um, go outside of Locus 5, which were sealed mm -hmm. at some point. Uh, very nicely, you can see here yeah. the ceiling to doorway um, of Locus 17, which goes to our room 2, which I'm cleaning right now, which was also cut by the new, uh, new Babylonian wall, but would have extended towards shortly before our southern trench border. Um, when this was sealed, we have no idea. We have to check um, the pottery and the other finds to maybe get an indication of that. And also this doorway uh, of Locus 12, which connected um, Locus 5 of Locus 11 right here, was also sealed at some point. Um, so um, we believe that the house may, be, may have been split um, uh -huh. among the generations when yeah, the, all the eldest son had his own family, so part of it came, uh, came to him. Houses changed a great deal during their lifetimes. Repairs were made to walls, floors were repacked, plaster was redone, and sometimes access to rooms was changed. This was accomplished by blocking in doors with other bricks, and we believe that this sometimes happened when the family structure changed as part of a marriage or perhaps sale of space or inheritance of space. Um, Loc in Locus 11 we was the last one we could uh, locate because um, we first went down in, this, in the southern area where we had the first wall surfacing rather soon going down there and when we extended our work here to the northern area we also found um, each day a new wall <laughs> and understood okay now this is a room and then we found another wall ah that's the end of the room and uh, to relocate everything and Locus 11 is now our latest addition to the house and is probably also um, this wall as the end of the house we believe that this part is either a yard or 
um, a possible outside area like street we cannot completely say because when you check so the orientation of our wall E with the very destroyed wall H at the very southern border they end perf in perfect alignment so there is no extension of the house so the house ends probably here and uh, from the quadri you, you still don't know exactly the no we're not completely sure um, of if Kassite or Old Babylonian I would probably think um, we're in Kassite period we find some nice stuff that is pretty certain Old Babylonian but it's all in the debris yeah, so, so it maybe be, uh, from, from the later periods yeah. We haven't reached the floor in most of this house, and we're still analyzing what we have found. The construction uses good baked brick on the outside of the walls, but broken brick on the inside. This is typically a cassite method, at Ur at least, and it dates in the late Bronze Age. But most of the objects we're finding in the fill come from the Old Babylonian period, in the Middle Bronze Age. So we aren't sure about the dating, but one thing is certain. The people living here were not poor. The house in its initial construction was very well built and it contained the same kind of artifacts, tools, jewelry, weights, and even written materials as those inside the city. In fact, we found a lot of tools here and we think maybe these were craftspeople making things for the city. Thanks for watching and be sure to join me again for the next Artifacts We Speak. Mm -hmm.